Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we ask the question, what does Bendy want? Bendy has been pursuing Henry ever since he activated the Ink Machine towards the end of Chapter 1. But why and what is the Ink Demon's endgame here? Well, to answer this we need to take a look at two separate theories. These are, what does Bendy want if he is in fact Joey Drew? And what does Bendy want if he is actually Cartoon Bendy brought to life? As we cannot be sure of which of these two theories are correct, we must look at possible answers for both outcomes. But before we jump into this video, remember to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified every time a new video drops. Let's begin by assuming that the Bendy we encounter is in fact a reanimated version of Joey Drew. There are many telltale signs pointing to this theory being correct, so check out my video on this for a more in-depth analysis. Assuming Ink Bendy is Joey then, what would his motivations be for seemingly hunting down both Henry and side characters such as Sammy Lawrence and Alice Angel? Well to answer this we have to once again turn our attention to my Ink Machine theory, which assumed the Ink Machine harnessed the most prominent features of a person's personality and then amplified them within their reanimated inky form. For Joey, this would mean these personality traits would include ambition, power, ruthlessness, and a controlling nature. From various recordings found around the studios, we know that Joey had no problem replacing his staff. Apparently, I didn't get the memo. Alice Angel will now be voiced by this Alice Pendle. Part of me died when he said that. Didn't care about poor work conditions. It's dark and it's cold, and it's stuck in behind every single wall. In some places, I swear this godforsaken ink is clear up to my knees. And had delusions of grandeur. There's nothing wrong with dreaming. Wishing for the impossible is just human nature. That's how I got started. Just a pencil and a dream. There are also visual signs here and there which suggest Joey was feared by certain staff members and also that he was very controlling when it came to the output of his studio. So combining all of these character traits and then amplifying them may produce a negative creation such as Bendy, something both powerful and to be feared. But this wouldn't make Joey and by extension Bendy an evil character who preyed upon the lives of others. So why does Bendy attack on sight and to what end? Well, just because Joey wasn't a truly evil person doesn't mean that after passing through the ink machine, he wouldn't then become that way. You see, if the ink machine does indeed amplify the positive or negative aspects of an individual, then a person such as Joey Drew, who seemed disliked, greedy and resentful, would then embody a darker nature than the one they possessed when living as a normal human. Which brings us to Joey's end game. It is my belief that Joey built the ink machine as a way to both reduce the cost of making cartoons, while also pioneering a new form of animation by bringing his creations to life. If we also buy into the theory that Joey was sick, as evident by the wheelchair flashback, then again it is reasonable to suspect he would want to use the ink machine as a way of giving himself new life upon passing away using his body as a vessel to reanimate himself as one of his own creations and gaining immortality. You know that whole god complex thing. However, he may not have realised that by doing so, the ink machine would bring out his crazy, controlling, power-hungry side to such a degree and actually rebirth him as a literal demon. This also means that Joey may have been on his deathbed when he wrote this note to Henry requesting him to visit the old workshop, knowing that by the time Henry arrived, his body would be inside the ink machine and ready for reanimation upon Henry activating it. But what if Bendy isn't Joey at all? What if Ink Bendy is in fact Cartoon Bendy? I feel the motivations here are far simpler. If we look at the various cartoons featuring Bendy, of which we currently have two, Tombstone Picnic and Haunted Hijinks, we immediately see a pattern. In both these short animations, Bendy is portrayed as frightened and the object of ridicule. He is tripped up, scared off, and shown constantly running from danger in the name of humour at his expense. Now let's look at some of the Bendy posters. Hell in a Handbasket and The Butcher Gang, both which also put the dancing demon once again in harm's way. 
Bendy was, as a cartoon, forced to live a timid existence at the expense of millions of people across the globe, laughing at him through their TV sets. Now imagine if you were Bendy in this situation. This is your existence. If, in this situation, you were brought to life, wouldn't you be hell-bent on destruction and attacking both the other cartoon creations that previously posed a threat to you and also looking for payback against your creator themselves? the very person that caused you all those years of anguish. Based on Henry's audio log from Chapter 3, it seems likely he was in fact Bendy's creator. On the plus side, I've got a new character that I think people are gonna love. Which would go a long way to explaining why Cartoon Bendy is out to get him. And that's it for today's video guys, I hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe for more horror related content, including theories, analysis and let's play videos, and I will see you on the next one.